Welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George, the channel that dares unlock those mysteries of home distilling and other things. We're so glad you're with us today. This is the uh, second video on the uh, Stillman X that we got from uh, Dr. Gratis. Uh, that's drgratis.com. Um, now, we're going to put it through its paces, as we told you. And so this is the first run. Uh, we're going to run this. I'm going to do like a stripping run. I put eight gallons of uh, sugar mash in here, or sugar wash, uh, and uh, a, little, a little bit over eight gallons. And uh, I'm going to run this through this three-inch column with this two-inch uh, shotgun condenser. Now, I've got these thermometers all over the place, and the only reason they're there is because I can. That's what I put them in there for, because I have places to put them. Otherwise, I would really only be tracking that temperature at the very top, because uh, that is the key temperature where we want to make sure that we have the vaporization point of ethanol coming across into the condenser. Okay, uh, and if you so for those of you who understand that process, what we've got several videos out there that will explain the vaporization point of ethanol and why you actually track it there. Now, um, in addition to that, uh, I've got, uh, of course, oh, we'll get to that in just a second. That's my air conditioner on the cooler that I use to chill water, uh, my homemade water chiller. Uh, I've got a half inch mason jar with this tube. I'm going to use my parrot. And in this parrot, of course, I have uh, a proof and trail hydrometer. And in the bottom of that parrot, I've balled up a little bit of, uh, I don't have it laying around any longer, I've balled up a little bit of, let me lay that down, of, there it is, of copper mesh. And I only put that in the bottom of the parrot. The only reason it's there is it's sort of like a little buffer in case I drop that hydrometer in there that doesn't crash in the bottom and break. Because you know as well as I do that... Uh, these things are droppable uh, only once uh, if you own one. But for some reason, if you own a bunch of them, you can drop it like 40 times before it breaks. Uh, it, I, I don't understand that, but that's, that's the case. So I just drop that in there. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use the uh, pulse width modulator. I've got one here, my 240 volt pulse width modulator because I'm running a 3000 watt element in the kettle and I'll be able to control the output uh, by percentage uh, so I'm going to do that and here in a second I want to give you a close-up because I've got that water chiller and I've got a lot had a, I've had a lot of questions about it I've been running that thing it looks like ass but let me tell you it's it's consistent and it's been working now for over two years um, I'm really probably yeah, about two years so I use it all the time right now my water temperature is 57 degrees Fahrenheit uh, and I will convert that to Celsius in just a moment. We shall return. Well, as you can see here, I've got my, uh, I've got the water return line that goes in, into that slot, and I've got my water being produced here with my uh, submersible water pump that's located inside. Uh, this is a uh, just an old 5,000 yeah, 5, uh, BTU air conditioner that I was getting ready to toss out. And if you can recall the way these things are designed, the evaporator coil sits about right here. And there's a squirrel cage that blows air across it. So I just bent that down, and that is inside this hole. And let me see, we are at, there we are. 14 degrees Celsius or 57 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm going to drop that. I'll, I'll turn it on and drop that down to about 51. You don't need to get any colder than that. Matter of fact, where it's at now is probably just fine. So that's my, oh, by the way, yeah, the heat exchanger on the back side. You know, that's where the fan just blows the heat off of that exchanger. Um, that's all there is to it. Now that you've gotten a run through of what the water chiller kind of looks like, uh, just to plug it in and let it run. Well, there we go. And that'll just continue to run until, of course, I unplug it. Um, the next thing I'll do is I'll plug in the uh, pulse width modulator, uh, turn up the power, and let this thing start to heat up. And we'll be back as soon as she gets pretty warm. Yes, it's always good to do a quick update. It's been about 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes or so, 
and I've been running it at about 80 percent uh, power. Uh, right now we're at 127 and climbing rather quickly and that's in the kettle uh, but what I'm interested in is I'm um, at 84.5 Fahrenheit, 29.3 Celsius. And that's at this bottom column, and I can feel it starting to warm up. But when I get up here, I'm 79.8 or 26.6. So, um, yeah, that tells me something. It tells me it's just I'm not balanced yet. I'm, my, my column is not, we're not warm enough, hot enough yet in the kettle to transfer all that thermal energy. We've just got to wait. It's going to take some time. Wow, if you would have heard me a moment ago, I used a couple of swear words. Uh, this thing got by me. I was busy doing something and it started running. So uh, you can see here that we are, have collected probably, oh, I don't know, ooh, maybe 300, 400 mils, uh, milliliters. And my kettle temperature is 189. There we go, 87.5 Celsius, 189. I'm at 186 in the bottom of the column, 178 here. 178 as in 81.4 Celsius. And my head, I'm at 174.3 or 78.9 Celsius. And I've got it turned down to about 25%. Now, the, the drips have stopped. So, I, uh, and to me, that's plenty. Uh, for my four shots and uh, so I'm going to turn it up just a little bit more and get a little bit of because I like to draw twice the amount out in order to consider that heads uh, now the heads cut is a very precise cut that takes place uh, in the the only real way to know the slight difference between the hearts and the heads uh, and this is a, a lot of it's opinionated but uh, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, while you're collecting, as soon as your proof drops dramatically by three or four points or proof points, you have just gone from heads to hearts. So you'll start off usually with uh, your highest alcohol proof at the very beginning in your four shots and then in your heads. Uh, but as soon as those heads, as soon as that proof drops, you know that you've just ended your heads and you can make your cut at that point. Uh, the only challenge with that is, is that you've got to find a way to, to, to measure that. Um, and if you're measuring that with a parrot, you know, you've, you're mixing, so you're getting not instantaneous readings, you're getting readings in general. So uh, that's why people use the taste. the feel, and the smell test. So I'm going to let that run a little bit, and we'll collect our heads, and then we'll go right into the uh, hearts collection. And I think I'm going to skip the parrot because I know that I'm going to run this hot. I just want to, and I'll find out what the proof is later. One thing I'll show you while I'm here, someone sent this to me a while ago, and this is a turbo pump. It's battery operated, and it's pretty neat. I'll tell you, uh, it's really good for transferring washes or mashes. Not good if you got a lot of solids. So, but if it's a liquid, this is really good because it'll pump from anywhere to just about anywhere. Uh, the only thing is, is that you just gotta make sure you keep this thing really, really clean. You can find these online uh, for 20, 30 bucks, uh, but they're really neat. But you gotta be really, really judicious about keeping these clean so every time you use you just make sure you run some water through it some soapy water clean it and then sanitize it uh, but this thing will last you a long time and it's really really comes in handy keeps you from having to move those big fermenters around where you're trying to siphon and you know what I'm talking about all right let's go uh, I got to turn the uh, chiller back on and we shall return when we get a run going we are at all almost two hours and so I've the, and these are my results so far. I've got one full gallon of 120 proof. And again, I'm running it a little bit hot. Right now it's 199 degrees Fahrenheit and 93 degrees Celsius. Um, I, most people already know what my cutoff is, is 204. Um, but what I've got in the top of my kettle, which is the base of the column, is 93.6 degrees Celsius. 
or there we go, 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, um, I'm still on, I'm, we're still collecting. Um, I've got plenty of chilled water. Uh, this is running really good. Um, we're over another liter here, a little bit more than a quart though. So um, we've, we've made a pretty good collection and I'm really, I'm satisfied with the time it takes and with the quality of how this thing is running uh, because it's running basically on its own. I've done nothing but sit back and allow this thing to run. Um, the jury's still out, but you know it does what it advertises it will do, and I'm quite happy with this. And at some point, I'll shut it down and take this, and we're going to go to the next step, which is try to run this using that vapor management uh, system and uh, see what we get out of that. Now, one new tidbit that I've picked up is that if you can track the temperature at the base of the column, um, what, that no, what that can tell you is when you're running out of alcohol in your kettle. Um, and the theory behind that, or the science behind that, is, is that as the temperature starts to increase up to the boiling point, 212 Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius, well, then there must be no alcohol left because you haven't achieve that azeotrope it is a data point uh, it is not a clear-cut point of measurement uh, it, but it is a good data point and right now we're at 200 degrees uh, Fahrenheit oh come on there you go 93.7 degrees Celsius so we're just about out of alcohol which means that this will start to boil off as just water alone. That's why we're starting to get tails. Oh, more to follow. We've got another run to make with this, um, but we're trying to run it through all of its paces, and we want to share that with you. So, until next time, yep, you know it. Happy distilling.